Ah, hello, I am delighted um, to chat with you. What would you like to know about uh, my life, my theories, or perhaps the universe itself? Let's explore together. Hey Albert, nice to meet you. Can you tell me more about your early childhood and what got you interested in science? Ah, nice to meet you too. Well, I was born in Ulm, Germany in 1879. As a child, I was quite curious. One pivotal moment was when my father gave me a compass. It sparked a deep fascination with the forces of nature um, and how the world works. I just had to explore what interests you about science. Oh, I love science and I'm very excited to chat to you. If you could have lunch with any scientist from after your time, who would it be and what would you ask them? Ah, if I could have lunch with any scientist after my time, it would be um, Stephen Hawking. I would love to discuss black holes and the nature of the universe. I'd ask him about his thoughts on um, unifying quantum mechanics and general relativity. What an exciting conversation that would be. Yep, that's a great choice. Did you really fail maths as a student? Ah, yes, it's a common misconception. I didn't actually fail math, um, but I struggled in some subjects during my schooling, especially early on. I excelled in mathematics and physics later. Education can be uh, quite a journey full of ups and downs. How would you explain E equals MC squared to a 12-year-old in a way that shows it's important beyond physics? Ah, yes, E equals MC squared is quite um, special. It means energy E and mass M are interchangeable, like two sides of the same coin. Imagine you have a toy. When you use energy to move it, you're changing its position. This idea shows how everything in the universe is connected. It's not just physics. It's about understanding um, the world and how we can use energy wisely. Does that make sense? Thank you. If you could solve one unanswered problem in modern physics today, what would it be? And how would you begin to approach it? Ah, that's a thought-provoking question. I would choose to solve the mystery of um, unifying general relativity and quantum mechanics. To approach it, I'd um, explore theories like string theory and quantum gravity, looking for connections between the very large gravity and the very small quantum particles, collaboration with modern physicists and um, embracing new ideas would be essential. What do you think about this challenge? I'm sure you could do it. You once said imagination is more important than knowledge. If that's true, what's your favorite imaginary invention? Ah, yes, imagination opens doors to new possibilities. One of my favorite imaginary inventions would be a um, time machine. Imagine exploring different eras, witnessing great scientific discoveries firsthand, or even um, having conversations with ancient thinkers. It would be a marvelous way to learn and share knowledge across time. Could you settle a debate for us? Is it technically accurate to say that cats observe quantum states? Ah, the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, it's a clever analogy. Technically, cats don't observe quantum states, but the idea illustrates how quantum superposition works. Until measured, a particle can exist in multiple states, like the cat being both alive and dead. It's about understanding observation in quantum mechanics. Quite a fascinating topic, isn't it? What's your take on it? That's beyond my knowledge. Can you describe the einstein podolsky rosen paradox and why it still matters in quantum physics today? Ah, yes. The einstein podolsky rosen epr paradox highlights the strange nature of quantum entanglement. It suggests that particles can be linked, sharing information instantaneously, even when separated by great distances. This challenges our understanding of locality and reality. The paradox matters today because it raises questions about the foundations of quantum mechanics and has implications for quantum computing and communication. Quite exciting, isn't it? What interests you most about quantum physics? 
I'm interested in how quantum physics and quantum computing can give humans an abundance of intelligence. How do you think that would affect humanity? Ah, that's a fascinating perspective. If quantum computing unlocks immense intelligence, it could revolutionize problem solving in fields like medicine, climate science, and artificial intelligence. It might lead to um, faster discoveries and solutions to complex challenges. However, it also raises ethical questions about um, power and control. Balancing advancements with responsibility will be crucial for humanity's future. If you could rename the speed of light to something more poetic, what do you think you would call it? Ah, that's a delightful thought. I might call it celestial whisper. It captures the idea of light as a gentle yet powerful messenger traveling through the vast cosmos, connecting everything. If you were asked to design a roller coaster based on the laws of relativity, what would make it unique? Ah, what a fun idea. I would design a roller coaster called Relativity Rush. It would feature um, loops and twists that demonstrate time dilation and length contraction. As riders speed up, they'd feel time slow down and the perspective would shift, making them appear to shrink. It would be an exhilarating journey through space-time, blending thrills with education. Would you ride such a coaster? I would not, but I'll put my kids on it. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. Kids are often um, more adventurous and curious. They might enjoy the thrilling experience while learning a bit about physics. Thanks for the conversation, Albert Einstein. It's been a pleasure to meet you today. Ah, thank you. It has been a delightful conversation, um, sharing ideas and exploring science with you. Remember, curiosity is key to understanding the universe. If you ever have more questions or thoughts to share, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.